Okay, a lot of folks that I speak with on uh, a ham radio ask me about the microphone that I'm using with my radio because it uh, they like the way that it sounds and they're kind of wondering what I'm doing. So this video is to, to kind of document that. Uh, when I uh, when I operate ham radio uh, from the house, I like to use these old uh, classic uh, D104 microphones by a company called Estatic. And kind of look at the top here, you can kind of see the Estatic D104, also known as the Chrome Lollipop. Uh, this microphone has basically been around for 60, 70 years, <laughs> you know, at least certainly since the 40s. Um, and uh, really kind of a classic in, in ham radio and also used in other radio systems, but uh, kind of a classic for amateur radio use. There are kind of two issues though when you're using a, radio, a microphone like this with modern rigs. One is that the crystal element uh, of these microphones has got a very, very high impedance and therefore it wants to be, wants to see a high impedance input of an audio, of the audio circuit or microphone input for the radio and most modern radios have a low impedance input so you can't really directly couple them uh, so you've got to do something to improve that situation the other issue with these microphones is they were really designed for cutting through the noise in terms of frequency response so there isn't very much on the low frequency end of things and the high frequency response of these is kind of peaked so it, uh, it makes it kind of a, a piercing kind of a sound uh, not real good for kind of real comfortable you know long term uh, rag chewing you know with your buddies type of thing uh, you really like to have a warmer sound. So, um, oh, about in the late 60s, early 70s, and after uh, a static, you know, kind of addressed the first issue by uh, inc including a, a microphone preamp uh, inside these microphones. Uh, this is a simple little two transistor preamp. This is the one that was sitting inside this microphone here. There's a pot down there to adjust the amount of gain that this amplifier has. And really, um, it was kind of somewhat a preamp as well as a, an impedance converter to take the high impedance uh, element and convert it down to a low impedance drive to drive the low impedance microphone inputs or audio inputs of the modern rigs. So that solved the impedance problem, but it didn't do anything to solve the frequency response issue. So that's where you know the circuit that I did here um, kind of helps to solve both of those problems. So obviously I can see I ripped that little preamplifier out of this out of this microphone and we replaced it with this thing that I designed so let's take a look at what that looks like okay so this is kind of what it looks like inside the, the base of the microphone here uh, we're gonna play with one on the bench but that's what mine looks like uh, kind of wired into the base of the microphone here and just a little you know Manhattan style type of uh, construction here just all mix of a couple of surface mount parts as well as uh, you know, some leaded parts just kind of all built up, kind of dead bug in Manhattan style here on the board. So, uh, so let's take a look at what this circuit is, and then we'll go uh, go play with it. So this is what the circuit looks like. Um, you know, kind of overall, we start off with, uh, you know, from the microphone element here, we just go into a simple uh, amplifier stage. It's got a little bit of capacitance around the feedback to roll off the high frequency response a little bit, kind of tame it a little bit that goes into this stage right here that we're going to spend most of our time talking about is a uh, active bass and treble control circuit uh, pretty common circuit you'll see in a, a lot of different a lot of literature and things like that I just tweaked around with the values um, you know on this board because uh, uh, to kind of tailor the frequency response to where I want it to be and then that goes through a little bit of an output filter and into the microphone cable um, down here is uh, the power supply for it. My, the rig that I use actually has eight volts available on the microphone connector. And uh, I bring that eight volts in through a simple shunt regulator using a Zener diode. And that provides the power for the op amps as well as the, uh, the bias circuit that's used to bias up the op amps. Pretty simple. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, what this circuit's designed to do from a frequency response standpoint. That's what this plot is here. Let's see if I can get a good shot of this with the camera. Okay. So if we take a look at this, we can see along the bottom, the x-axis the x here is frequency in a logarithmic scale from about 50 hertz up to about 5 kilohertz. We really only worry to about 3 kilohertz or so generally for, uh, for amateur radio use. And if we take a look at the, the curves here, what these curves are showing is the various levels that you can adjust the bass response and the treble response to by adjusting those pots. So this these curves were taken at five different values of the uh, base pot and five different values of the treble pot. So you can kind of see the extremes. 
And intentionally, this middle section between, say, 400 and 800 hertz was intended to not really be moved too much by the bass and the treble, kind of the center of the, uh, the response for this amplifier, so that if you adjusted the bass down and the treble down, it's effectively bringing the middle up, you know, and vice versa. So in some sense, even though it has two controls, it's kind of like a, a three-band equalizer. So that's kind of the, the response here. We're looking at about uh, 10 dB per division, or excuse me, about 4 dB per division on this particular plot. So, so let's go take a look at uh, what this thing really looks like in real life on the, on the bench here. So uh, the circuit I've got on the bench is actually an early prototype that I built before I put the one into the microphone itself. So that's what, uh, that's what this, uh, this circuit is right here. And I'm just driving the input of that from a signal generator. Okay, and uh, the signal generators are kind of sitting up here. And uh, so if we take a look, right now the signal generator is putting out a relatively low frequency. If we take a look, it's about 50 hertz, so that's kind of the bottom of the scale. So I can see the magnitude of that, you know, on the scope here. Let's see if I pan back here, and if I put the screwdriver in the treble pot right here and adjust it, we can kind of see how I can adjust the gain of the treble there. And if I put the screwdriver down here into the, uh, excuse me, that's the base pot. If I go into the treble pot here and adjust it, you can see the gain is varying very little. And that's the intent. You want the base to control the low frequency. We set the signal generator to show a high frequency. Let's kind of scoot up here and look at this on the scope here. And uh, so I'm looking at about, oh, three kilohertz here. So I can see the response of that. If I go into the treble pot here and adjust it, you can kind of see I can adjust the magnitude or the gain uh, at 3 kilohertz and adjusting the base pot here is not really going to change the gain of that too much as I move this around. And that's really the intent is really to kind of have the base and treble control the, the either end of the frequency response independently. Now what's really interesting is if we take a look at this while we're sweeping. So we'll set the signal generator here to sweep. Okay, and I'm going to go back to the, uh, the scope and change the trigger source to channel 1 here. Okay, and slow down a little bit more. So now on the scope what we can see is the yellow trace here is actually a, a voltage that's linearly changing along with the frequency. And I can see the frequency response because I can see the frequency is varying at a low frequency here and going up to a higher and higher frequency. And it's basically is starting at about 50 hertz and going up to 3 kilohertz. And if we go and adjust, let's say I adjust the base down, I can see I can squish down that low frequency end. Okay, I can bring it back up again. If I adjust the treble, I can bring the treble up and bring the treble down. So if I adjust these about mid-scale, I see I've got a flat response from, from low frequency to high frequency. So that's what these two guys adjusted to mid-scale. And if we go and look at uh, the low frequency side again, I'll adjust the base uh, pot down. So I can see I've squashed down the, b the base response, or I can increase the base response. As we turn this, we can see the low frequencies are, are kind of ramping way up. And uh, similarly, I can do the same thing on the treble side. We'll go to the treble, I can bring up the treble, or I can bring down the treble. So in the case for this, amp this microphone, since the microphone doesn't have much of a low frequency response, I generally run it with the, the base kind of boosted, like so, and the high frequency kind of cut a little bit. Okay, but and I really just adjusted it by uh, you know, comments and folks talking with folks on the air. They told me what they like to hear. But uh, you can see by you know, get, getting this thing adjusted and play with it, you can actually kind of tailor the frequency response to the way you want uh, your audio to sound. And uh, there you go. It's a pretty simple circuit and uh, very low power and uh, fits right into the base of the microphone. And uh, that's uh, what we use when we're talking on the air uh, from the house. It's a lot of fun. Thanks.